thanks for clicking on our video. You won't regret it. Today we're talking about the top five reasons to forgive. And they're good ones, so you'll want to stay here and watch it. We are really excited to be participating in the mormon.org uh, Easter campaign this year, hashtag Prince of Peace. And we have chosen the topic of forgiveness this week to um, learn more about and to kind of discuss on our channel. So yeah, be sure to check out mormon.org. They have a lot of great content on there for you guys to learn more about this campaign and to just have a wonderful Easter. So today we're talking about forgiveness and there are five things that we've come up with that are really good reasons to forgive even though we know it's really hard sometimes. Also link below in, in the description there's a link to some of our other friends who are also participating in this campaign with us. Make sure to check them out, um, subscribe to them and they have some really great content for this campaign as well. So let's just dive right into it. Number five on our list of really awesome reasons to forgive is because we're commanded to. Jesus has commanded us to forgive others. That's just what he wants us to do. In Matthew, um, Peter asks Christ um, how many times we are to forgive somebody. And Christ's answer is even 70 times seven times. Like, which means just keep forgiving. Forever. Forever. Forever and ever. It's not like there's a number. Just always. So that's the number five reason is because we're commanded to. Number four is to not be hypocritical. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to ask God to forgive us of our sins and the, and the bad things that we do, the mistakes we make, if we're not willing to go and turn around and forgive, you know, our, our friends or our family or our spouses or whoever it might be that might be, who maybe offended us. So right after uh, Christ answers that question 70 times seven times, he tells a story about a debtor who basically the person in the parable forgives of a huge debt that he had and then when that person who owed that debt gets out of jail he goes and like demands all this stuff of somebody who owed him a debt the the first person who forgave him finds out about this and, and gets kind of angry like why why are you doing this you know i forgave you such a huge debt that goes back to christ and he's he basically has suffered for all of our sins he forgives us if we ask for forgiveness so we need to forgive others so don't be hypocritical forgive those who uh, who ask for forgiveness. Yeah, that's a good one, so don't be hypocrites. I remember, never mind, I won't tell that story. What? <laughs> I, I said, I called someone a hypocrite in like third or fourth grade, and she told on me to the teacher. And he's like, did you really say that? And I was like, yeah. He's like, ha ha, like, that's funny. Was she actually being grader. a hypocrite? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's only a fourth grader who's using that word. So I was like, I, he didn't get mad at me. Number three on our list of reasons to forgive is to help our relationships grow. If you have any relationships at all in your life, you will know that people make mistakes. Someone's offended you or really actually done wrong towards you. And either that relationship dies or you forgive them and you grow together. So there's a really cool story um, in a talk that we'll link below about it's not really not really so much a story but just something that happens in, in everyday life is people will get mad at each other spouses in particular and when somebody's offended and hurt they'll try to dig up something in somebody's past and then they fling that right at them and then the other person tries to find something even bigger and worse to throw back at them and the result of this kind of like mud slinging is just everyone is left feeling dirty and upset and hurt um, and what we should do instead is just forget those things, let people repent, let people change, let people grow, and forgive them. And I know that that's something we've, we try to do in our relationship. We've had stuff that like, you know, people feel, we, we feel really bad about with each other. And instead of like bringing those things back up the next time we get in a fight or something goes wrong, um, you just let those things die in the past so that your relationship can, you can like, move, move forward. forward. Yeah. Especially with spouses, marriage is pretty much just like practicing forgiveness because you're in it together, but you're still making mistakes. Um, and so you just have to forgive each other and ultimately hope that that person is growing as you're forgiving them. Obviously, there are things that happen that take a lot longer. This is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. It's not easy to forgive. We're not saying that it is, but when you do, that relationship will grow. It will. Um, it's just it's just kind of how life works. Not just even with, with spouses, but with, with your kids and with your friends and family and whoever else there might be. Um, kids are a really good example of, of quickly forgiving so that then you can like get back to like loving them. They're so quick to forgive. We'll get mad at like Porter or Piper 
and then they'll come to us to like console them yeah <laughs> because we're the only anyway they're just a really cute and you know awesome example of being quick to forgive so that your relationship can grow so that's number three is to forgive others so that your relationships can can grow and flourish number two in our list of reasons to forgive is to see real miracles in your life and in the lives of those around you. We're going to link another story down below. This is by um, Gordon B. Hinckley. He was the president of our church for a long time, um, especially when we were younger, and so we really love him. But he told this story about this dumb kid and his friends who stole some money and went on a shopping spree, and they bought like a frozen turkey and they threw it at a car. And it went through the windshield of this car and just tore this lady apart. She had to get tons of like facial reconstruction surgery and go through a bunch of terrible experiences to just after this, after this incident happened. And he talks about how this made like all the attorneys and politicians and people like gang up on this kid and use this example as a reason for criminal punishment to be harsher and things like that. And they wanted to just give this kid like the worst punishment he could possibly have because this was a terrible thing and they're just so sick of all these kids acting crazy. But this woman who was injured, she wasn't like that at all. She wanted to know more about this kid and wanted to know why he's making these decisions to be um, kind of crazy. And the day of the hearing, she the boy comes up to her and, and apologizes very sincerely. He's sincerely sorry. And she goes up to him and she just embraces him and they cry together. And she tells this young man how she hopes for his life to become better. She doesn't want him to be in jail for 25 years, which is like what he easily could have gotten um, at the hearing. But this woman's forgiveness had changed this boy's life and it could have been for the worse or for the better, and because of what she did, this boy's life was better. And it's a miracle, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen miracles in your life from forgiving, from seeing people forgive. It's just a, it's just a wonderful thing, and honestly, miracles can be seen in our lives as we let go of our grudges and let go of um, the hatred that we have towards people and situations. Yep, so number two, see miracles in your life. It's a great reason to forgive. So, number one, our number one reason to forgive is to find lasting peace in a troubled world. There's so much going on nowadays with like all the political tension and terrorists and just all kinds of bad things that it's really easy to just have all kinds of like harsh feelings and contentious, contentious feelings in your heart. Um, but if you forgive those around you and, and just try to have a forgiving um, attitude in your life and, and experience forgiveness daily, um, you can find that lasting peace that only comes through that and only comes through our Savior. And, um, you know, I just think about, you know, how sad it can make you if you just constantly carry around these grudges and, you know, it can only lead to just like a, a, a distressed and a sad life by doing that. But you can like release those feelings, you can release those like sad, uh, you know, those sad things by coming to the Lord and, and putting your burdens on Him. Um, like we learn his, his yoke is easy and His burden is light. Or in other words, our, our burden can be light if we take upon um, ourselves the forgiveness that can come through Christ. And I know that's true, um, without a doubt. And a really great example of this is from the book The Hiding Place, if you guys have ever heard of it. it's. Um, the story of Corrie Ten Boom and how she, her and her family housed some Jewish people in her home and got caught and were sent to concentration camps. Um, her and her sister were sent to the same concentration camp. Her sister died. She was put through hell at this at this camp, and but she survived. And as she um, kept on living, she would go around speaking and doing what she could to spread her experiences and her the many spiritual experiences she had while in the concentration camp. One story she tells when she was a lot older, she was speaking at an event or at a talk and she recognized a man who was in the crowd who actually came up to her afterwards as one of the guards, one of the most harsh guards at this, at the camp that she was at. And she just explains how terrible it was to see him again. It brought back so many memories. He was just a really terrible person during the war. But as he came up to her and talked to her, he explained how he turned his life around, how he's, you know, Christian now, and he 
is trying to be a better man and then and then he asked for her forgiveness and she explains how she just couldn't like she had, she had grown so much since the war but at this point she was like I can't forgive this man he he did terrible terrible things I physically just can't imagine forgiving this man and so she prays to the Lord and says if you provide this feeling of forgiveness, the most I could do is just to shake his hand. And so she, she explains how she put her hand out there and it was a total dead feeling. Like she just didn't have any emotion towards this man. And she shook his hand and the, the, immediately after she shook his hand, she says she felt warmth and the tingling in her arm and all these things and how she was so overcome with forgiveness and love for this person that she like kind of shouted like, yes, I forgive you. <laughs> she kind of like was very loud about it and it surprised her but it's just a wonderful story of how she it was really hard I mean one of the hardest things I think we can all agree that those people in the concentration camps were put through terrible things and it'd be really hard to forgive a person like that but she does and she says the feeling of peace and love and joy that she got from that was so unimaginable that she she never knew that she could feel that way and it was just a beautiful thing as we let go of the tension and the grudges against family members friends co-workers siblings spouses, parents, grandparents, as we just, as we let it go, as we lay those tensions and burdens on the Lord, He will provide the feeling of forgiveness and He will provide the peace. And I know that it's true. And I know that as we turn to the Savior, we can feel peace. We can feel love and joy again after hardships and, and hard trials. And daily, in daily life, we can have a happy life through Him. And that's why He's the Prince of Peace. Um, through Him, we can, we can experience this, this lasting peace, peace that lasts throughout our lives, um, despite you know the troubled world that we live in. So those are our top five reasons to forgive. We've been commanded to by Jesus Christ to avoid being hypocritical, to help our relationships grow, to see miracles in our daily life, and to have lasting peace in our everyday life. So as we approach Easter this year, we just have a challenge for everyone watching this to try to be more forgiving, to try to give, give that forgiveness and experience that peace that can come. Um, if you've had someone who has offended you, forgive them, maybe reach out to them. If there's someone that you feel like you've offended, maybe reach out to them and ask for their forgiveness. And yeah, experience the joy that, that we know you can through Jesus Christ, the, the Prince of Peace. If you want to learn more about Mormon.org's Easter campaign, we will have the link below. Go ahead and check it out. Thanks you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video and we hope you have a great Easter holiday. Thanks. Bye.